All right, welcome everyone to this Thursday night's edition of Southern Woods and Waters. And let me tell you something, uh, it's been warm up till now, but get ready because tomorrow things are going to change. And I think it's going to be tomorrow evening, but it's going to change come this Saturday and Sunday while it's going to be busy out on the waters as far as fishermen out there, fisher ladies. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I don't think many skiers are going to be no. <laughs> Not in that kind of weather. But uh, tonight I have a great guest, and you know him as well as I do, and that's Burl Shirley, uh, the co-owner of Stan Sloan Zora Bates Company right here in Middle Tennessee uh, that makes some of the best spinner baits and some of the best baits ever. Uh, matter of fact, uh, one of the baits, uh, the aggravator, is the one that won the first, the very first BASS major or Bassmaster, uh, Bassmaster Classic, Classic uh, was a was a Zorro bait um, Stan Sloan aggravator. So uh, let's broaden out, introduce our guest to you. You know him as well as I do, Burl Shirley. Burl, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Hugh, for having us. Well, I tell you what, Burl, you. Uh, we, the show tonight we're going to do is about fall fishing patterns. And, uh, well, they've already started to make some transitions. There's still some lingering fish in the summer ledges. But wouldn't you say the majority of them with the water temperature dropping like it is a little bit, that they're kind of moving that way, they're following the shad in? Yeah, there's there are several, you know, that's moving and getting in the back of the creeks. And, uh, and we're not just talking about bass. And, Everything oh yeah, all, everything, everything. We we run into a couple of guys who was fishing on Hickory last weekend that was uh, catching crappie in the back of the back of the creeks. And, and just it's that time of year where the where the shad migrate to the backs of the creeks. Now, why do they go back there? You have any reason? To, you talking about the bass? The bass go no, back there because no. the shad move to I the mean, back. I mean, why are the shad moving back into the shallows? Because they've already spawned. Do, is that just their time to go back there and really fill up on uh, algae and that, eat algae? You know, and, and I think stuff? a lot of times, you know, in the fall too, where they've been out. I mean, in the summer months, they've been out deeper. You know, fall when the when it rains and things. You know, it brings fresh water and stuff into there. You know, and it's just new kind of helps for them, their to, their health and everything, exactly. doesn't it? Um, I do want to talk about one other thing later on in the show, and something that's near and dear to your heart, and and uh, smallmouth. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of reports. Dale Hall had a had a rather above average die off. Yeah, I've heard smallmouth. I've heard quite a bit. I talked to Danny Stone there, the krill checker. That you know, it's over that. I've talked. I've kept in touch with him about it, and you know, he said they've lost several. We fished a two day tournament up there um, a couple of weeks ago, and and you know, we did see two or three good smallmouth that was that was dead That's you know i can't heard. say that it was from the disease you know if it was maybe a, a guy trolling or something maybe hook one deep or something you know i mean we didn't see abundance i mean it was one here and then you know the next day maybe see one over another pocket i i haven't i haven't seen any you know where there's 30 or 40 float you know I, but mm -hmm. i have heard you know danny them say that they've run into some areas and seen 20 or 30 but you know i, I hope that and the way i understand it, it it's a deal with the water that they're getting i mean this is what i've been told that they're getting in the bad part of the water some of the water's bad up there but they say as the fall comes and the winter you know and the water cools down that it should take care of it that it's not like a major disease that it's going to wipe them all out now is that is the fall start to turn over again where the lake makes the lakes turn, turn over yes i was so you uh, got a dead zone in there exactly i mean center hill matter of fact i bought a new boat motor the other day and i was down i stopped there at sligo just to run it and i noticed that the water there is starting to turn over you know a little bit there. yeah so the water you know the temperature cools down the lake it's going to turn over. And I wanted to say one other thing that during this, uh, what we're talking about, the smallmouth dying off, um, my reports that, it's, that I'm hearing and I've been calling too, uh, not a lot of little ones, but a lot of the bigger fish. A lot fish. of the bigger fish. And a lot of the Three slot pound fish to, to like, four and five and six pound fish. You know, the slot fish, the ones that's, you know, the 17, 18, 19 inches is what I'm hearing, you know. Yeah. But a lot of the, you know, we fished up there a lot this year at night. Night did a lot of night fishing. We didn't, which we was fishing more for largemouth because, you know, it takes in a five fish tournament, you can only weigh four fish and two must be over 21. And that's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Right. Know? That's true. That's true. <laughs> but, that's true. Uh, but, you know, but there were several guys that was catching 21 inches. It went but three pounds. So, you know, I don't know if that was affecting the, you know, the weight loss of them or what, but the, you know, the, the bigger fish was, 
they like look like and, they had and we had spawned. caught some yeah we had caught some you know that i mean not no no dry no big ones or anything but 16 17 inches it just looked poor you know it just looked right. like they got something wrong with them so you know maybe that you know like we've been told that it's just you know something with the water so you know i'm just glad it's not a disease because that's a but that's it's a great not lake that's close it's to not a house. huge concern right now it's a it's a natural thing it's just that it's a lot more visual right now exactly i don't think the lake is really hurting as no. much because i don't think you could hurt i'll tell you what I, I mean you know it's you know I, I, somebody joked you know say maybe it could stand a couple of them to die <laughs> <laughs> you know i'll tell you what last winter we went up there and it was it was a ball i mean we catch 40 50 smallmouth a day <laughs> that's when it's fun yeah. now we need more of a shad die off i'll say oh that. yeah now yeah we definitely. Need, a, need a winter you know i mean all these lakes that you go to now you just look down and your boat's just floating on shad it's not I, i'm telling you i can pick it up and talk and all. they're as big as the boat i mean balls <laughs> of shad bigger Last big as your it, boat oh hickory it was just unreal you know just look down this big, big black balls i mean it's and all those fish and they get dialed in on it it's it's like you know they want the live shad and that's it they're not going to touch nothing <laughs> well we may be smarter than they are we may have more money than they do and all that and we can buy all these gadgets but still you're competing against nature oh yeah and, and when there's millions of them in in a ball of shad it's hard to compete you throw one lure at a time there you can't hardly compete that's right <laughs> but that's what we're going to talk about mainly tonight is fall fishing patterns and let people know let them give them a little help here because they're getting more and more people coming to tennessee wanting to know how they can get uh to tennessee lakes there is a lot of places that are available for you to bank fish from i do believe uh twra does a fantastic job along with the corps of engineers on some of these lakes and maintaining and putting those places out there so that anybody can really uh, have a good time out on the water. Uh, we just recently, hey, I gotta, gotta say thank you, publicly thank you to Burl Shirley. Burl, you hooked me up with Jackson Kayak, and Jackson Kayak is now a sponsor of the show. And we're gonna show you how easy it is to go fishing in a kayak. If, if big old Bubba's like me can get out there, <laughs> then anybody can do it, I promise. And, we're gonna... and, not, and you don't have to spend $50,000 no, on, a, on no. a new boat to do it. You know, and you don't have so. to worry about if your battery's been exactly. uh, charged or or is it a dead cell in it or, or is my is my barren buddies got plenty of oil in them, whatever the case might, might be. Might want to eat you a good Austin biscuits that morning so your batteries, you know, will keep going. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But I'm, I'm hooking up with Jace over there uh, in, in Cookville. Jace is going to take us. Sparta. Uh, Sparta. I'm in Sparta. Sparta yeah. and, and Jace is going to take us uh, up to the Collins River. And uh, we're going to do some musky fishing up there. So. I tell you what, if you hook on to some of them muskies, me and Ronnie he said they will. Uh, I tell you what, I, I had one. We was in a twenty foot, a twenty foot boat, and, uh, and it's all we can do to handle him. Right <laughs> I'm just begging him to let go. <laughs> Please hurry up. Please, Please hurry up. Yeah, if you break fish. my brand new rod and reel. <laughs> all right. Well, we got to take our first break and pay some of our bills around here. So hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Waters. This segment is being brought to you by Stan Sloan Zora Bait Company, where setting the hook is an everyday thing. This segment is being brought to you by Fate Sanders Marina. Come by and check out the jewel of Percy Priest Lake. All right, this week's pictures of the week are being brought to you by Flowers Deer Processing. And already he's busy out there. Listen, if you want something that really tastes good with that deer, get you a whole batch of snack sticks. Snack sticks. I promise you, you will not regret it. You'll probably send me all kinds of love mail for telling you about it because that stuff is that good. All right, our first picture here. This is from, uh, well, uh, let me read to you. It says, was fortunate to have an opportunity to fish Lake Champlain as part of our trip to the Northeast with my wife. We both boated at least 28 smallies or more on the 27th. I caught all of mine using a tube. The first picture is a fish that I was able to catch sight fishing. He was si sitting on a huge boulder right under the boat in about six foot of water, dropped the tube on him and bam. So much for smallmouth being skittish. Most of the fish were in the two to three pound range with the best in the four pound range. And that's pictures one, two, and three there showing you that. And picture number four here is, hey Hugh, all of these fish came from two places on Gunnersville. 
Mud Creek and Town Creek. We ended up with 16 on a weekend trip. The little girl is my 12 year old daughter, Caitlin, and my wife, Sandy, is Jimbo and Dayton Blair's cousin. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Hey, you can send your pictures here to us at Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robertson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37219, or simply email them to me at hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com. We'll get them on here really, really fast. Hey, got some great reports coming in also on deer. Um, so a lot of guys and gals have been successful uh, being able to harvest great, great deer. Uh, I did hear of one that is, that they're sending me the picture. Uh, a guy took an eight pointer right here in middle Tennessee that green scores or rough scores 161. That is a huge eight pointer. Already heard of one report of in Kentucky, southern part of Kentucky, uh, one report on an archery hunt. Um, young man came in with one that scores 246. So two big, huge bucks already, and the rut's not even started yet. So uh, just keep sending those pictures. We're going to have that picture of the 161 coming up really, really soon. Uh, we've got it now, and we're going to schedule a show. It is huge buck. So uh, Middle Tennessee, just keep letting some of those little ones walk, and they'll grow up to be great big ones before you know it. Hey, we got Burl Shirley in the house with us tonight, and Burl is avid, avid fisherman. Uh, one of his partners is, is a, one of my newest buddies, Adam Wagner, and Adam has done really well in the last two or three years, four years now. Uh, he's really come on strong, and he's somebody to be reckoned with, I'm telling you, on any body of water. And uh, but he puts his homework in. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, people. I go with fishing with Adam. You know, they're like, "How's he do it? How's he do it?" I say, "Puts his head down. That boy can catch them." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That boy can just flat fish. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, and, and, and it's it's just uh, I, it's like Stan Sloan said when I bought this business. He was talking about different people. You know, fishing. You know, different people having the ability, you know, just had the natural knack for it. You know, Adam right. sort of like you cut his head, you cut his head off, you know, and fish runs out. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And see, that's, that's much, that, yeah. but he does, he stays on it constantly. Oh, yeah. And he's always trying to figure out a better way to catch something or how to get bigger fish. And along with his ideas, You've come up with some baits that are awesome out there to help him do it too. And, and he fishes a lot of Stan Sloan's or baits. And we wanted to touch on them tonight a little bit. One of the big things is, is you know, we're, you're, trying, you're trying to imitate shad because that's their main um, staple diet right now would be shad. They're following them back into the back end of the creek. So what would come to mind is something that looks like a shad. Uh, that's what I would be throwing to try and, and, and find fish, whether I was bank fishing or fishing from a boat. And so while they came out with the Alabama rig, Burl came out with a Tennessee rig. So we got a, one that's legal here in this state and it only carries three uh, lures. And, Tell us a little bit more about yep. it, Burl. Hugh, it's uh, this is our version of it. This is called the uh, Aggravator Aggravator Rig by Zorro. Mm -hmm. This one we make. It has a tin head. It looks like it's lead, but it's tin. It's tin. It weighs less. Weighs, it weighs less. A lot less. less. You can fish hold this. It, hold it still. Right. Well, hold it right there. You can fish this. Yeah. You know, in shallow water. I, I sort of was sitting there thinking around, you know, and I thought, you know, that big, big head and those wires running out, which I know you can catch fish on, but you know, I was trying to figure some way sort of like to make it more, look more realistic, you know, like I love so, the skirt. So we added the skirt, you know, to it, which the skirt slides up when you bend the wires out, the skirt can't come down, you know, I mean, right, you know right. it, it can't come down. And also another option, which you can buy it without the rattle, but we put our signature, the famous rattle, the you know, that goes on the aggravator mm -hmm. spinnerbait, goes on our, uh, our uh, rattling jig also oh, yeah. we'll put the rattle on the back and that thing i don't know you can hear yeah, that thing. It can, it can. i mean this that, that works great you know like in a little more dirtier water you get down to gunners when you've had a lot of rain they're pulling pulling current and the water's more you know murky muddy up you know you got that swim bait running back of it and it's vibrating that shaft you know you can you can hear the rain that and fish go to sound. Oh know, yeah, that they 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 go to sound, and you can uh, they can find this. You know, we've caught. Seem like you throw the regular one, and you can. You don't get me wrong. You catch some fish with them. I mean, you throw five big old shad out there. Oh yeah, you know, they're gonna find it. They're but, gonna make some. But this rattle, it, it really does. It really does help. 
and you also make a five lure package. Yeah, also. We, we have the five rig, you know, for like the which Kentucky is legal and, on, on Gunnersville. You exactly, can take it to Gunnersville, exactly. and that's that's legal. Uh, so the five is uses five different swim baits. Or man, I've heard of all kinds of things people are putting on this. I thing. I, I um I've got I didn't bring one with me because I really don't have. I've just been playing with it, but I have took uh, a five rig. And I've put three wires running out the back of it, which would be Tennessee legal. Right. I pull this here and I cut the wires off and bend them up. I run me two buzz bait blades on it. You can oh. draw that thing across the top of the wire and you got dual buzz baits twirling. I mean, I think, you know, you're getting schooling fish somewhere, you like to catch three at a time. You know how you catch That's one right. on a big, you know, you catch, you throw it across there and you catch one on a spook or a buzz bait or something, you got two following it up. Why wouldn't they? hit all three i'm levels. telling you so though, that's, that's a great one thing idea. that we're uh you know that we've worked on uh you know which it's all about the bass industry i may have let the cat out of the hat on that <laughs> somebody else come up and start doing it but you know that's a uh, that's you have till option, tomorrow you know. burl to come out with it. <laughs> but but i got the idea <laughs> that's right so. well that's an awesome idea i had never thought of that but you're right because they do they flutter on top a lot and and you'll see bass come up um, I played with it, you know. Actually, I was up at Del Hall, and I had one come up and blow up on just just throwing it in the shallow water, reeling it pretty fast because you got to keep it up. Yeah, you got to keep it up. Keep it up, and that thing it'll just like a like a twin buzz bait. That is awesome. All right, so we got now buzz baits, and let's talk about buzz baits. We brought that up. Uh, buzz bait is a hot lure right now. Exactly. Now, is it just timing? I meant with what? When do you stop throwing a buzz bait? I, I don't think you you know as far as if you're fishing during the day, you know, you're talking about a daytime, there's not a bad time to throw a buzz bait. I mean, everybody think, oh, I got to go throw it early, you know, early more. Hey, we've been fishing and pick the thing up at one o'clock with the sun straight in the air and throw it and boom, you know, you catch, catch three or four pounder on oh, it. Oh, yeah. So, but, uh, you know, I mean, I think as the water starts, you know, really getting cooler and cooler toward, you know, winter, you know, I think it's less bite. But, you know, right now it's uh, it's, it's hot. You know, we've got we, we make two different two different ver uh, two different sizes buzz bait. We call ours the head knocker, which the head knocker, you know, is the blade hit actually, the blade hits actually, the actually hits the head and you can you can mash it even more toward the head to get more of the knock or you can mm -hmm. pull it off the top. This one here is a half ounce uh, buzz bait. It's, you know, the one that we probably sell the most of. Right. You know, I mean, you can cast stuff. But we also make a smaller one. We make one that's three sixteenths, a little smaller buzz bait. When those fish are dialed in on like those smaller shad, yeah. you know, I think old hickory, this this thing works great down there. This smaller buzz bait, it uh it really does. And I and I got when I first bought Stan Sloan's, I talked to Stan before he'd passed away and I've got a little story about this, but <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was talking to him about buying the company, you know, and then we was meeting and talking, which if you know Stan Sloan, he was an old yeah. Old, old codger, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he was sort of. He was, old, he was a little different guy. But anyway, I was sitting there. He's kind he had, of rough around the edges. Exactly. He had these. Uh, he had these. You know, these little buzz baits on. I was like, "Oh, Stan," I said, "You sell pond baits too?" He's like, "Boy." Do you not know what that is? <laughs> well, I had to get my 30 minute lecture on, you know, what, what it was, you know, and I started throwing it some and, uh, and, and it really works. You know, we've been on over here. Adam's like, you got a smaller buzz bait you make. Don't you? Like, yeah, he's like, bring it. Let's try it. And we've caught some fish with this thing. I, uh, matter of fact, I had a good one last week right there at the boat and it, it come off with it there, blowed up on it. And then we, we caught some more, some more. We had one good one, you know. What, I, I want to ask you something else about these, the, the, the buzz bait too. Do you ever throw them or you or Adam, either one, ever thrown with trailer hooks on oh yeah yeah that's that was my mistake last week you know i didn't have Not a trailer when he didn't get in the boat you know i was like turn look and I, I sort of got the bad look, you know, from my partner there. He's like, you don't got a trailer hook on that bike. Have you not learned nothing in two years you've been fishing with me? He's like, you don't pay attention. That's the favorite thing. He's like, I pay attention. You just don't know I am. But he says I don't pay attention. But, but anyway, uh, it's, um, yes, trailer hook is, you know, most definitely. I mean, it is aggravating sometimes. Same thing on a spinner bait. You know, you throw it, that trailer hook is another hook to hang up. You flip it by a log or something. You know, it's aggravating. And it gets hung do, up. But, you know, it's, I think it pays off. You know, I really well, just think it's short, short strike and, you know, the bait itself. You know, a lot of times you can't get those blow-ups, you don't get it. But that extra little trailer hook, you know, I've even seen guys, like on a big spook, tie like mm -hmm. a three-inch like a three inch piece of braid on the back of the hook and run like a treble hook off the back of it when they're short hitting it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's... That's it's, not a bad uh, idea either. Especially if you're, if you're fishing a clear 
clear lake that doesn't have a lot of greenery down there. Or you get a lot, you know, a lot of near logs. A lot of times, you know, with a smallmouth, a lot of times they just blow up on that thing. They just don't get it. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know how. You know, if you got that big service boat and you got nine hooks, I don't know how they. Something I don't know how they miss them. <laughs> It happens. <laughs> it does happen. It does more, and, and it's always when you need that fish that it always happens. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Another one is is, is of course is the famous why Zorro's stance long Zorro baits came about was the aggravator spinner bait. Talk to us. Now's the time, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know those fish are chasing shad. Uh, you know, you can take this thing like in a three eighths or something where you can throw it up I mean, even a quarter in some places when they're so shallow, you know, and burning the spinner bait or even slow roll it. I mean, you know, different people fish it different ways. Matter of fact, my uh, partner that's in Zorro bait with me, Ronnie Rogers, we're fishing a tournament this weekend on Old Hickory, back down here at Old Hickory again. I yeah. guess I fell in love with this lake, but <laughs> fishing the USA Bass and down there, a regional tournament that we've qualified for. And uh, he went out today with a guy. Uh, and they uh, they caught some on over here today, and some of the men is just burning that spinner bait, throwing it up, and burning it back in the real shallow waters. But I said right. we make we make a rattling version again. You know, I've talked right, about hold on, the I want I want to hit some more of the spinner bait, but first we got to go to do another part of the show called our new product of the week. Let's go to it first, and then when we come back after the break, we're going to talk to him about the aggravator. This week's product of the week is being brought to you by Gateway Tire and Service Center. We sell tires for the way you drive. All right, welcome back. And, and I've got two great um, samples here of a great product that's just come out. It's called an RZ mask. Got with these people with the RZ company and talked to them a little bit. And guys and gals, if you're out there suffering from ragweed pollen like I do, uh, that keeps me indoors when I should be out there hunting that big buck of a lifetime. Um, this is an excellent alternative. These things have a, well, let me show you. I want to show you, be able to show you here. This has a filter on the side of it here. If you can hone in on this just a little bit, it's got a little part right here that you actually is the intake. Uh, right here, and this has got a filter in it. It's a carbon line filter. Keeps all pollutants and pollens away from you. Now you'll still get, may get itchy eyes or something like that, but you won't be having those sneezing attacks uh, like I do all the time. So this is a great thing. Also, guys and gals, if you're out there on the lakes fishing, and the, like this weekend, it's gonna be a little cooler. These are neoprene, and you can put them around your face, and it'll keep your face warm while Whoever's driving is just letting it, their hair go. <laughs> so great, great idea. Check them out. You can check them out through our website, southernwoodsandwaters.com. We've got a link to them, but it's rzmask.com. Go check them out. Hey, we're going to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to get into the aggravator. So hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Waters. This segment is being brought to you by Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right, welcome back everyone. You can call us here at 737-7767 anytime. This is our segment where we open up the phone lines and try to answer all of your questions. And I'm sure everybody in the world is going to be calling Burl. <laughs> 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 Burl, we got to touch because the aggravator has been around for so long. Uh, it did win the very first Bassmaster Classic. Classic. Um, it's you really haven't changed anything, but you may have added a rattler to it or, or something like that, some skirt colors, some different colors. But all in all, it's the same aggravator as it was back then. Exactly. He, exact matter of fact, I, I was at the boat place this last week, uh, getting a motor put on the boat plum. Plum down in uh, Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, and a boy walks up. I've got my boat there with the boat wrap on it, you know, and he's like, Stan Sloan, Stan Sloan, you know Stan? I said, well, we own the company now, and he's like, I just want a boat with your spinner bait last summer, you know? So, that's I mean, awesome. It's, that's uh, the, the, the people we get, you know, the comments and stuff, people, what people want, it's just unreal. I mean, this spinner bait, it fishes so great in brush, it, this head design. When Stan, when Stan invented this, to come up with this head design, he did his homework. I yeah, mean, he did. You know, he, uh, people tell me, you know, about him standing down in ponds, standing on the dock at Sligo, and thought, well, I don't like this, I don't like that. But, yeah, he's, uh, he's really did good. And, and we're going to keep producing the same, you know, the same spinner bait. I, I have had some you know, uh, input on a little different type, uh, 
aggravator and we are going to maybe do something but we're going to still produce the same old Stan Sloan aggravator that we once did but we're uh I'm in the process of working on some stuff uh I've uh, got some stuff I that I that I will talk about later on we'll come okay. back down here whenever okay. I get it you know in detail that we're going to do to the spinner bait to change it up that to have two different models you know maybe okay. some different blade sizes some different wire sizes uh and even coming out with a new size uh, also. So Sounds it's great. going to be hey, great for now. We got, a, we got one caller here. This is David. David, how can we help you tonight? You, how you doing? Just great, David. Hey, you, you remember about five weeks ago, uh, I've met you before, going through uh, old, uh, old Hickory Boulevard out there, right about DuPont, and you was pushing your boat about 8 o'clock one morning, and I rolled the window down, we were talking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, how Okay. Well, I was down. I live up in Cookville, and uh, I was down Center Hill. I fish down there a lot. And I was down there last Saturday morning, real early, about six thirty, fishing a point out there. And boat come in there. A guy yelled over at me, "Want to know if he's fishing a turn?" But my partner and I, and I said, "No." And that was very cordial of him. That don't happen often. Right. But we were catching some nice fish. Old boy come in there, and I said, "Yeah, come on in, fish with us." I don't care, bit. We got talking. He said he had a fish off his coming weekend. I said, "Music City Anglers." He said, "Yeah." Yep. No, and I said, well, I listen to you all the time. <laughs> and got to talking and found out, uh, I'll give you a hint, he was in a champion boat. Oh, I can tell you who that one was. <laughs> yeah, but I can't, but was his name Daniel? Daniel Hallam. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to tell you what. You better watch him. He's gunning for you. He wore me out. And I, I, I left. I got on out. I went on down the lake. Well, he is, uh, Daniel Hallam is is a great fisherman anyway. Uh, he does an awesome job, but he's he's like uh, he's like Adam. Uh, he's uh, You can rip his head off, and I think fish would come uh -huh. out. <laughs> so. I, told, I, told, I told him down there Saturday, I said, I'm going to call him. He said, call him, call him aggravate him. I said, I'm going to call him aggravate him. <laughs> well, I appreciate it very much, David, and, and Daniel is a, is a great fisherman, uh, but uh, he's going to go for second place this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go, brother. I just want to call and aggravate you with him. Thank you very much, Dave. We appreciate you, buddy. All right, have a good one. <laughs> you too. And uh, and we got Glenn. Glenn, how can we help you tonight? Uh, yes. Uh, I was calling, and I know Burl. I fished around him quite a bit. Um, we're out of Matt Manville. Yeah. And I would uh, like to know if we could get the. Uh, the, the skirts, the extra skirts that goes on the aggravators. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You can go, you know, to like your local tackle shop. If they don't have them, we have a website now. It's www. I might put too many W's in there, but anyway, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Fallingwateroutdoors.com. Falling and you can go water. on there and get those. We've got everything listed on there, but it's www.fallingwateroutdoors.com. Well, that's great. But uh, in the future, I just wondered if you would uh, be interested in probably putting the extra skirts in the spinner baits with a pack after you get them. Because you know, if you use them quite a bit, after you know six months to a year, you're going to put new skirts on anyway. That's not a bad idea, bro. Yeah, that's, selling that's a kits. good. You know, maybe selling the kit. You know, which it you know would bring the cost up, which we try to we try to compete. You know, um, I mean, ours is all American made right here in the United States. It's hard to compete with some of these guys over in China and stuff. It's building them, but yes, you know that is a that is a thought. That's a that's, good a, idea. that's a good idea because I tell you what, uh, a lot of his a lot of your spinner baits could. Could do you know, very there's well. A lot, but I, I'll throw this in there too. There's a lot of spinner baits out there that would never make it to the second skirt, but Stan, <laughs> Stan Sloan's durable. <laughs> He'd go through two or three skirts. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much, Glenn. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you guys. All yeah. right, sir. And it, you know he's right though because oh, yeah. uh, 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 you know a kit. For somebody that that's, wants to change the colors, maybe he needs to go from a, a, a sexy shed, a citrus shed, exactly. to, a, to a bluegill. Exactly. You know, and, and you just you need it that quick. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. We're going to Center Hill this weekend. Uh, Music City Bass Angers is is having their annual fish off on Center Hill out of Hurricane Bridge. Now today, fishing was pretty good, but we know that come tomorrow. That's going to change. Oh, yeah. It's going to change. So there's a difference in what we caught them on today might not be what's going to work on Saturday. So instead of digging it, I mean, 
trying to find a spinnerbait if they could just change out the, the skirt. Exactly. I don't mean to get off pace, Hugh, with you or anything, and I don't want to tell all your competition, but you take that right there to center hill, I don't care how tough it is. That shaky head can catch you some You dust. catch fish. That will <laughs> catch exactly. you some fish. That's right. And let's talk about that because I mean, center hill has really come on um, on the spotted oh, bass. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's unreal. You know, it's every year, you know, you keep catching, you, know, you see one bigger, bigger. Yeah brought in and like last year i think larry sparks brought one in one of our tournaments i don't know exact five five thirty six five twenty i don't that's know a, it may be bigger one. than that I don't, maybe it's five fifty six i don't know it exactly but yeah we've uh there's been there been you know some tournaments that, that me and ronnie the guy that i that i fish yeah. with a lot which i own the company with we've weighed in you know 16 17 pounds spots you know we've the biggest one we've ever caught down there was like a 480 something but and that's but that's that's a, that's a sizable that's a spot all right hold on a second we got gary gary how can we help you tonight uh, yeah, I talked to your wife about three weeks ago, and your website is not updating. The latest time it updated was in uh, June, end of June. It, and it, get the recipes off the website. Okay, uh, Gary, she is saying if you will call her tomorrow, uh, call her at 859-6978. Uh, she will let you know because th we are constantly changing things on the website. There, there's, there's something wrong somewhere else, she's saying. So if you will, call Joy at 859-6978, and she'll help her you work, out with that. Is okay? that her work phone? That's her work phone, right. Okay, I've got it, Tim. Thank okay, you. well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, there's always something goes wrong with computers. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I have to get the, my, my grandkids to fix mine. <laughs> they're, they're just so much smarter than I am. But uh, uh, getting back to... You know, usually if you're talking about spotted bass, especially in our neck of the woods, we're talking about the Coosa River chain. Oh, it's unreal you down know. there, too. We now, it's unreal there. Lake Mitchell, we always talk. They Mitchell, in, uh, in uh, Henry, um, uh, Neely Henry, and some of the others down in there. Uh, you know, even Pickwick's got some big spots in it. But all down in there has been big spots. But then all of a sudden, here comes Center Hill. You're hearing onesie twosies. But then I look, and there's several of them in the two and three and oh, four yeah. pound class coming on. So and Dale Holla, Dale Holla also, you know, used to be small, you know, five pound. I mean, five fish limit of Kentucky's up there, six, seven, eight pounds. You know, they're coming on. Matter of fact, uh, that two day tournament that we fished up here a while back, I had one that was almost three pound out of there, and they're they're getting in there too pretty thick you know the and don't fish. you think that there's some in there that's five and six pounds oh yeah 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 i think that water you know is so deep and clear in some places they just live you know i don't know it's like center hill at nighttime you know you catch the 12 and 13 inches but as soon as that water starts cooling off and it hits fall i mean here comes the three pounders the two and a half pounders it's just you know common i don't i mean i think those kentuckys just you know live out there with the menace of deep at, during the summertime that they just don't come up and if they being, are you know they don't bite you know, and being they that their demeanor is so aggressive a, a, a spotted bass is so much more aggressive than any others he eats all the time oh yeah he's an eating machine i mean you can't there's you can't that's footballs you know? that's like, what you they are when their bellies are just they're just goers you know shad's running after mountain he's like why did they hit this again? They ought to be so full, you know. It's, it's, but, yeah, they are. They are very I think aggressive. they're greedy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just want everything. But they're, they're, they're great sport fish in the way that uh, they're very uh, uh, acrobatic. I wish, I wish all lakes had them. Don't get me wrong. You know, you go to some of these lakes that don't have any spots or something, you're like, man, I wish this was center, I wish I was at center hill. I could go over and get me five Kentuckys and survive this term, you know, for right. another day. But, That's right. Yeah, they're, it's, uh, you can catch, you can always catch them a lot of times you know it's they're just they're fun fish to catch you know and they're in you know i mean don't get me wrong you know you got some better fishermen but uh uh i guess you say an unexperienced fisherman can go and take that little shaky head worm like at center hill they don't know anything about it just pull up i mean you know you can put in at raglan bottom and go across on that bluff or put in hurricane go across over there and you know if it's just not this plum terribly tough i mean you catch yeah. you, you know five or ten fish you know i mean the man just wanted a little mess 12 inch take home and eat or something you know you could you can go out and enjoy it take a kid down there you know it's a they're they're, they're good fish to do that yeah. with all right, that's awesome. Hey, I tell you what, let's stop right there. We're going to do our tip of the week. This week's tip of the week is being brought to you by Interstate Batteries of Music City, located at 3729 Highway 109 North in Lebanon, Tennessee, 
home of your alternative power source. All right, this week's tip of the week is one that, that Burl shared with me earlier, and that is the, the Zorro buzz baits here. The head okay? knocker. The head knocker. Now, you can actually pinch it just a little bit, and it'll make it hit long, uh, louder, louder, make louder noise. And this is especially good when you're, like, fishing in the rain, a um, lot of uh, wind, uh, stuff like that. You want that thing to make a little bit more noise than usual. You can back it off by spreading that, uh, the spring-loaded uh, arm, back it off a little bit, makes less noise. And you can make it to where it's just making the gurgling noise, just coming through the water. So this week's tip is use and learn how to tune a buzz bait, and I promise you, you'll catch a lot more fish. All right. Hey, we'll be right back with more Southern Woods and Waters. And Joy has got a recipe again. And this time it's one that's for guys like me that need to lose a little weight. So <laughs> hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Waters. This segment is being brought to you by Advanced Chiropractic, where we help America feel great. One spine at a time. All right, I tell you what, this Brought week's recipe. Broker Headquarters Group. Let our team in camo help you with all of your real estate needs. Well, this week's recipe is being brought to you by Broker Headquarters. I'll say it anyway. Uh, but Miss Joy uh, just took one look at me today and said, "You know what? I got the idea for tonight's <laughs> for tonight's recipe of the week." And I said, honey, was I inspiration? She goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is a it, really a low-calorie, low-sugar uh, type of dessert, and it's uh, pretty quick and pretty easy. Joy, talk to us and tell us a little bit about it. Hi, Hugh. We got a fly in the uh, studio that loves this. Today... He's huh? getting to lose a little weight. Well, he needs to go somewhere else. <laughs> this is Mary Carter. She's the, the co-owner of Girl Pay. That's right. <laughs> and Shelby and Ty, we've been bow hunting. Papa took us bow hunting, and that's what y'all wanted to do. And you saw deer and chose not to take it. Ty, what, you had does with their babies, and why didn't you take a shot? You had it. He told me not to. Papa told you not to. <laughs> well, well, you said you didn't want to. You didn't want to take a doe. I wanted to, but you did. I couldn't. You couldn't. But yeah. the baby was right behind it. Yeah, not with a baby with it, and you just didn't want the buck. So you just wanted what you wanted. The button buck. Well, she had a spike, and you had a button buck. That's why. Okay. I know that you're on a diet. I know we're supposed to be doing good, and we are. Mary Carter, this stuff's good. And the kids put it together for me, so I was working. What, how'd you do it, Ty? Well, I got the angel food cake mix and crushed pineapple in a large can, put it in a bowl. You mix it really slowly. Whenever it's puffed up, you put it in the pan, then you put it in the oven. Uh, you preheat the oven uh, to 350 and leave it in there to 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. What kind of pan did you use? Two you different used kinds. A 9 by 13 or a 2 by pan. Yeah, right. We made it in a tube pan. And, and here we got this from Weight Watchers. It's a Weight yeah, Watchers. Yeah. Inspiration for you. Favorite. Yes. Weight Watchers. And you know what? It, what's so funny <coughs> is when we go fishing in our uh, tracker boat, I'm always saying, hold on here. You're scaring me. You're going so fast. You're scaring me. Slow down. Am I going to be saying that in that kayak? <laughs> No, -uh. no, no, I'm no afraid fast? not. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. Well, we're looking forward to uh, the kayak. I like those guys, and that, that sounds like a lot of fun. There's a lot of people fun. that want Joy Church. The preacher up there said, please let me go. So That's right. It's a we'll do it. All right. Well, you can catch this recipe along with many, many others on our website at southernwoodsandwaters.com. And Joy will have this one posted by tomorrow. Uh, hopefully it'll be up tomorrow afternoon for everybody to see. But, uh, you know, I just can't believe that I'm the inspiration of it all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I, I got to tell you, though, uh, you know, the doctor told me to watch my weight, so I stuck it out there so I could see it. <laughs> so I've been watching it ever since, Burl. <laughs> but let me, <clears throat> let's get back to uh, Stan Sloan Zora Bates. Uh, I want to talk about one of the great things I think that y'all make uh, there is your jigs. Uh, <clears throat> you do a lot of different skirts, skirt colors, 
And the, the reason that, that I like them is because you fish them. So you're out there tweaking on it all the time. Yeah, he, we got, we've come up with Stan had the casting booze bug, which has got the wire weed guard it's, that's really famous that the guys up, you know, like Bill Tyler, the FLW tournament director, he fishes it. Uh, Charlie Evans, which used to be the CEO, president of, of uh, FLW now, fishes the pro side. Right. You know, uh, John Devere, I can just, you know, keep on naming guys that made this jig famous, uh, but it's, uh, it's just a, it's a great jig. I, I tell you what, if I've got a bait to go to, this is going to be it. You know, it's it's won me a lot of money um, from time to time. We have, uh, you know, the rattling jig that Stan, <coughs> Stan designed. It's got the rattle, you know, oh, yeah. the rattle on the back yeah. that, you can, that you can flip, <coughs> which we've, we have changed up. Stan had a, a bronze hook in it, which we still offer that. But, you know, the bronze rust, that's sort of – back then, that was the very best hook he could get in it. That's you right. Know? I mean, that's there right. was no such thing as a Gamagatsu or, you mm -hmm. know, hook. But anyway, we've updated it to a Gamagatsu, you know, black nickel hook. You can buy it with that in it now. So, if the guy's out there, he knows – Looking for that, you can also do that. Now, we come to a couple of more, you know, jigs, like the football jig. We've we've got, actually we've got one with a rattle that you can, you know, that That's you right. can use also. But we have a casting <laughs> jig. It's been really popular. Kentucky Lake on the ledges and stuff. We we sell this in three-eighths, half and three-quarter. We've got it with a fiber guard. Some people want to fish the fiber guard. More. My preference is the, is the uh, wire guard. The wire one. guard. I think you get a better hookup if you're in 20 foot of water. You set the hook, I think you get a better hookup. Plus, I think it's, you know, it's pretty invisible in the water, you know, versus a, uh, versus that jig that's right but the other one i guess the newest one that we have is the boozer brush bug um i've sort of got this thing and got some ideas uh matter of fact adam wagner he's a great flipper i mean you know that's that's his trade he just all every time he we go fishing you know he'll pull up oh you got to eat just how much i love to flip you know i, I hear this I get, I get sick of hearing it, but, but anyway uh, you're not paying attention <laughs> <laughs> yeah but anyway we uh we come up with this jig this new jig it's sort of got like a short shank hook i mean this thing right here catch them get them where it counts you know right there in the lip where every time you set the hook it's got a good weed guard in it and another thing it's got two spurs on it on the back to hold your trailer. You That's can, right. You can run that, you know, like a pack across it on there, sort of cook it, and then straighten up. You can't. I mean, you're going to tear the plastic off of it. But you know, I, it's so aggravating fishing the jigs. They're pushing the skirt, pushing the That's trailer right. up. It's just, it's All just the aggravating. Time. Then another neat feature about this is the recess eye for flipping. You know, I'm you get down you. in the cover, you get down in the logs. You know, you come up over it. That eye, it don't hang. I mean, like you know, other jigs, you know, they'll they want to hang mm -hmm. up. But that recess eye right there, uh, everybody, I, I've you know, let people tell me, be in a tournament, say, hey man, take this jig and, and try this jig. Everybody's come out like, I think I fished the best jig that I've ever fished. You know, as far it's as exactly flipping color right. and stuff. And it's uh, and it's got the same booze bug head, you know, as the as the casting jig does. The tremble, it's just got the hook recessed down in the head of it more with a stout. You know, a, it's a it's a flipping. It's more it is a flipping. great flipping jig, exactly. and I tell you what, especially when you got a huge huge tree in the water and you're seeing all these limbs and everything you know you got to go over about six or seven of them before you can bring it into the boat that jig's going to make it back to the boat exactly and then <laughs> while we're on jigs we've got this we've got the whiplash you I know it's sort of like i mean you got the biffle bug you got two or three ones out there but they're all football heads they're made you know for casting and dragging this here can be cast and dragged back to the boat but you can also flip this in a tree it's got the it's got the booze bug rattling head on it that you can put that thing will come in it just so look looks so realistic and we've got other ideas up our sleeve with this thing here too doing some other stuff that i'm working on and i, I, I we'll come back and talk about that at another right. time but i don't i don't want to you know but <laughs> but that's pretty it's pretty interesting with it but that's right. that thing is really good well i'll tell you what we've got to do now is go to our uh product of, i mean our giveaway of the week uh, what we have here is a bunch of Stan Sloan Zora baits. Of course, we're going to give this away. It's a package worth about $30. Uh, probably a little bit more look yeah, at what's so in this bag here. <laughs> but let me show you. Hey, we he's going to give one away an aggravated umbrella rig. This is a Tennessee rig. Of course, we're in Tennessee. So, I mean, be the fifth caller here. 737-7767. We got a great, great package of Stan Sloan Zora baits. Now we need you to hurry back with more of Southern Woods and Waters. This calendar of the week is being brought to you by Drycon Carpet Cleaning. Give us a call or visit us online at drycon.com. All right, let's get right into the calendar. First off, congratulations to Danny McLeod. 
from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Danny, you got a great, great Stan Sloan Zora bait package. I guarantee you can go to any lake around here and you're going to wear the fish out. Uh, this Saturday, the 6th, October 6th, and, and Sunday, October 7th, Music City Bass Anglers is having their fish off out on Center Hill Lake. It, uh, and we're all going out of Hurricane Bridge. I um, also want to say Thursday, October the 11th, the Shriner Circus starts at the Municipal Auditorium and runs to the 14th. That is the Shriner Circus, and all those proceeds go to help those burn victim children. And so you just got to go out there and support that. Also, Friday, October the 12th, and Saturday, October the 13th, you got the Carl Perkins Sixth Annual Bass Classic out of Paraville Marina. Remember, you had Rick Wood on here last week talking about that. Do not want to miss that. It is 21, over $21,000 in just prize money money alone so, so uh, that'll be good enough incentive right there Saturday October 13th and Sunday October 14th is the Kentucky youth deer hunt season opens uh, so get ready for that take those youngsters up there uh, they're in Kentucky and uh, do that. Hey, we got two minutes. I wanted to, you've got a couple more items that you just want to hit on real fast, Burl. Talk yeah, to us. Uh, Hugh, we, we've got a couple more deals. We was talking about the uh, uh, umbrella rig there, the aggravator umbrella rig. We're making uh, hooks now also that, right. that's weedless, that's got the wire weed guard in it, you know, that it still, it doesn't take away from the action of the swim bait, but yet you bump that limb or something, you can get it. You can It'll get it. It'll come over the top of it and you don't hang, you don't lose your $30 worth of swim baits and aggravator rig and your hooks and everything. And, and then the best thing you've got to come out with lately is... Is we are now tying hair again. We're tying hair jigs. So Stan tied hair. Jigs. Stan was probably the pioneer. He's probably the very first one around That's in right. a bait company to tie hair. But we're back to tying. We've got a football hair jig and we've got the booze bug head hair jig. Sounds great. And I wanted to say that uh, my grandchildren told me I need to say hello to Miss Monica and hello to Mr. Ronnie. They were watching out there. That's the parents of my grandchildren. So so uh, just want to say hi from me. They didn't get to. Mimi cut them off, them but I did. So <laughs> there you go. Hey, we want to thank Burl Shirley, of course, uh, for being on the show and being part of the show. He's been a longtime sponsor of the show, and we really appreciate you and Ronnie helping us out in every situation there. And uh, thank you so much for that. We appreciate you for the opportunity for the invite to come Well, up. I tell you what, you're always maybe, invited. Maybe one of these maybe days we, we can, can get, get Ronnie, Ronnie on here. here. Yeah. I'll tell you, that's like pulling him. <laughs> or maybe bring you know, one of our pros to have some guy like that. Adam, Adam I don't think that's I don't know. Happen. He's a pretty shy guy. <laughs> He's pretty shy. <laughs> but I tell you what, if you want to get out there and have a good time with your family, uh, remember TWRA and the Corps of Engineers have made a lot of the lakes accessible by bank fishing. But remember, if you have an opportunity or a choice, make Stan Sloan's Oil Baits one of those choices that you can make. And I tell you what, that just helps out the show and make it possible for you to watch. Uh, remember, wear those personal flotation devices, and when you're in a tree, wear that tree restraint belt so they make it back each and every week. We'll see you right here next week. More Southern Woods Water.